Hello folks and welcome back. So now we can get our characters swinging their weapon, but they're not actually, if they hit anything, they wouldn't be doing any damage. So let's set that up. So as you recall in our player animation blueprint, we added the attack trace uh, animation notify to each of our animations. So let's actually create the function for that. So inside the player blueprint, over in the functions graph, I'm going to create another one called attack trace. So this will be called every single time that animation notify is called. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag off here and get a sphere trace by channel. Now I used to use line traces on this, but with that it's got to be almost pinpoint accurate. This gives a little bit more uh, leeway for user error, so it's a little bit more player friendly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the viewport and I am going to add a scene component called attack from. Now this isn't something that will actually show up in the game or in the character. It's just a little object, an empty object basically that we can just call the transform of so that we can attack from here and go out. So I'm going to drag out that attack from I'm going to get its world location because we want our attack trace to start here. Now we also want to get its forward vector, so whichever way it's facing we want it to go out that far. So I'm going to drag this back a little bit. Now from the world location we want to add a certain amount from our forward vector to the world location to tell it where to end. So from here I'm going to drag off and we want to get the add and to get our the distance out from our forward vector you want to drag off shift 8 to get this multiply or you can type in multiply just like that. Now if you're using Unreal Engine 4 you'll notice that you have like vector times float, vector times all kinds of stuff, vector times vector. In Unreal Engine 5 you just have a multiply node and you'll always get this to start with. So, but we can use this one so I'm going to hook this to the addition and then if you right click on the B you'll see at the very bottom you can convert the pin and you can convert it to any of the things that we would need. So I'm going to convert it to a float so that it's a vector times a float. Now I'm going to just input a value here. If you wanted to, what you really what you could do is in your weapon info, your sword info, if you also included like a range, like if you had a short sword and it could only reach so far versus a long sword that gave the player a little bit more distance, you could also include that in the sword info and then just feed that directly into there. I'm not going to do that right now. I might update that later on, but for now it's just going to be a set value. Uh, mine is going to be probably 150 to start with. And my radius is just something small, just 20 for now, which will I'll show you how to draw the line so that you can uh, check and make sure. Now one problem with this is that it's going to get blocked on anything that registers a visibility. So if our character is holding the sword, or our character themselves actually will trigger this hit uh, result. So what we want to do is we want to tell it what actors to ignore. So we're going to drag off here and we want to make an array. So it'll give you just a bunch of little, you can add as many pins as you want. I just want to make sure that it's ignoring the player blueprint, so I'm going to get a reference to the self. So even if it hits any of these components, it completely ignores it. I'm going to add two pins, and we want to make it ignore our sword and our shield. Since this will only be called when we're in melee mode, we don't have to worry about anything else. But we don't want it to trigger on our sword or our shield. 
Now just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and if you hit this draw debug type, this will actually draw the lines and let you kind of play around with their values. So we'll compile that real quick. We'll go into the player animation blueprint and in the event graph we need to actually call this. So I'm going to drag this one where we set the reset attack. I'm going to get the attack trace anim notify and then I'm going to call that attack trace function from the player blueprint. Oop, get on there. So now I'm going to save real quick. If I jump in, I grab a sword. So that red line, anything that gets hit by that red line, it will consider applying damage to. Oh, I guess point one is not enough. All right, my event graph. I gotta update that. Um, she just got stuck, so I'm just gonna increase that a little bit. But now, anything I attack, that is where. Which that looks good for this sword. So back in my attack trace. I want to tell it what to do based on whatever it hits. So right here is the out hit. This will give you the results and he breaks apart whatever it just, whatever this interacts with and you can get all kinds of stuff from it. So we're going to break it open. We're going to add a branch because we don't want any of this to fire if it doesn't actually hit anything because then it won't have any of these values and it'll call some errors. So the way we're going to set up, so this will return true if there was a hit. So you don't have to use this one, you can use that one. Uh, the way I'm going to apply damage is I'm going to check to see if the hit actor has a tag. So you can use this to check the class that you're attacking, but using a tag, you can apply a tag to a bunch of different stuff. So. Um, I'm going to drag off it and say actor has tag. Now the tag is going to be enemy on mine. Then I'll add a branch. So if there's a hit and if it has an enemy tag, then we want to apply damage. So I'll hook this to the true. The damaged actor will be the hit actor. Now for the base damage, you can just feed in like your strength or your sword modifier, etc, etc. Uh, I kind of want to do this a little specialty. You don't have to. Uh, you could just plug in whatever you want to, but I think I am going to do a few things. So I'm going to take out my character's strength. I'm going to add my sword modifier to it and then let's see I want to do kinda in range I don't want it to be the same amount every single time I kinda want it to be within a certain range so from here I'm going to to int or int to float whichever way that is and then I'm going to get random oh can't do that here I guess random int in range so I'm going to set this combination the strength and the sword modifier as the maximum amount and then I'm going to take off there and subtract also a random integer in range oh that's not in range random integer in range I'm gonna say take off between 2 and f 5 and that will be my minimum amount
So right now, just to test this, I'm going to hook the false up. So even if it doesn't have that tag, it'll apply this damage. And I'm going to print string just to, just to show you what I'm talking about. So you can do any kind of convoluted math that you want to. Uh, if you have, like if your character has a sword use level, sorry, excuse me, uh, I have a esophagus issue and it sometimes flares up. So apologies, but uh, let's jump in. So if I take this out and I hit that, it did eight. Oh, I missed eight. Why are you doing? I just tested all this a little while ago, and now it wants to freeze almost every time. Let's do point two five. So if I jump in and I attack that, it did six, nine, ten, ten seven just a little bit of variation or you can just feed your value straight in if you want the same amount of damage done every time so that every time you attack it does the same amount so yeah that's pretty much how you would attack or attack and add damage now, like I said, you don't have to do this. You can just feed that straight into every time. Let's see, strength is 10. What is my sword modifier? Why my sword modifier not doing nothing? Oh. It's because we ain't doing nothing with it. All right, well, let's set that up real quick. So, once we set, let's see, in our changing sword, right here where we're adding the new sword info, let's break that open real quick. Get out of here. Because I want to set my sword modifier. I'll hook that right there. I'm gonna hook my potency right there. So it'll automatically truncate, which means it rounds it to the nearest decimal. So right here you can see it says round A towards zero, truncating the fractional part. So like negative 1.6 becomes negative one, and 1 1.6 becomes one. So now when I go in, Let's take a, a look at this sword real quick. Oh, I gotta check the data table. So that was an iron sword. So its potency is 10, the rusted sword is five. All right, so. Yeah, now it's doing more damage and updating as it should. But it's ignoring our sword and shield, so it's not blocking on any of those. So yeah, that's all working like it should. All right, in the next one, we will start setting up a magic attack. So that, well, we'll either do that or we'll condition our character to be able to take damage based on their defense and their shield and all that. We'll, we'll see. So, all right, thanks for stopping by, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.